semi-final B for the Nations Cup at the World Tour event in New York is about to get underway. You can see the cars lined up on the grid. Group B machines at the Autopolis short course. Igor Fraga starts on pole position in the Subaru WRX. Alongside him, Patrick Blazian from Hungary. Good for the starting position for the Hungarian driver. Second row, Jonathan Wall, we were just talking about him. Can he turn things around? Can he get a good performance and a great result? Salvatore Mariclino is alongside him, the Italian in fourth position. And then it's Nicolas Rubelar in fifth position in the Focus Group B. And alongside him is Rayan Derouche, the Frenchman in the Toyota 86. Ryota Kokiban in seventh position in the Peugeot RCZ Group B machine. And alongside Ryota is Rick Cavalham from the Netherlands in the Ford Mustang. Eighth place is Benjamin Barda, also from Hungary, so two Hungarians lining up on the grid in this race. Alongside Benjamin, Adam Wilk from Australia in the Audi Quattro. What a historic machine that is. Anthony Felix is in 11th position, won of course the Nations Cup yesterday. A lot of home support for him. And then Benjamin Cho from Taiwan is in 12th position. So here we are. This is a weird thing to call. We have our Group B cars here at the Autopolis Short Circuit for our second semi-final here at our World Tour event in New York. Great location here. There's a bit of a class description there for the left. Running cars modified for driving on dirt. This is dirt. And higher ride heights, meaning the higher centre of gravity. The cars are going to roll a lot more through the corners, meaning you have to really wait for the car to pick up before going. There's our hot pick for the event. Nico Rubelar, we think uh, this driver is going to surprise us. He, of course, is our winner from the first World Tour this year at Paris. Performed really well here at Autopolis but not in a Group B car. <laughs> no, quite. It's going to be uh, an interesting time to see how he, he gets on, of course. Uh, sports hard and sports medium compound of tyres for these drivers to use. They must use at least uh, both compound of tyres. So you can see Fraga, Blajan, Rubelar, Kevlham and Barda starting on the medium compound of tyres. Everyone else on the harder compounds then. You can see the crowd here in New York as we get ready to get semi-final B for the Nations Cup here in New York. Underway then. Who is going to lead the field down towards the first turn? Here at Autopolis, over the line we go. Fraga starts on pole position. Blazan in second as they all duck into the slipstream and try and make those moves. A very tight first corner as well. Look at Blazan going towards the outside here as he tries to attack against Igor Fraga. Fraga with the inside line. He tries to defend. Wong also defending third position as well as Rubelar tries to go the long way around the outside. Mariclino on the inside of him. But Fraga does hold on to that race lead ahead of Blazan. Rubelar does get the better of Mariclino and side by side here between Blazan and Wong down in towards the right hand. Here we go. Wong on the inside. Blazan on the outside. Mariclino into the side of Blazan and Rubelar's in to third place at the head of all of that. A great start there, but you can see the differences between these cars and the cars we've just seen on the course of sideways, and Rubelar comes up into second position. What a start from the Chilean driver, of course, our winner at the first World Tour this year in Paris, showing his intention nice and early, going after Frank. He will not let the Brazilian driver get away, as we've seen so many times over the course of these events, but an absolutely, uh, I said, fantastic start, a bigger way of saying it. Not the cleanest thing for our drivers, but that's kind of what these cars are. They're very hard to be precise with, all about getting the car sideways to an extent, then getting on the power. Nice and easy, Blajan in the background goes past one, but a bit too wide there. And Jonathan Wong is now going to be side by side. Blajan takes to the grass, making the most of that running car pen uh, pedigree. And now it's a drag race down to T1. And a great battle further back as well between Darush, Kevlham and uh, Ryota Kokiman. All of those guys nearly going three wide into certain corners as well. Side by side we come here as well. You can see between Blajan and Wong. Wong on the inside, Blajan on the outside, but he's got the overspeed. He's got the position. Rubelar, though, is hunting down Igor Fraga. Fraga does not like these Group B machines. They're not his favourite cars. And you can see he's beginning to struggle now as Rubelar's got great pace behind him. Meanwhile, you can see an incident under investigation as well between Blajan and Mariclino. That'll be for the opening lap incident between those two drivers. So, of course, we have to mention as well, there are two compounds of tyres being used in this race. The top three drivers currently on the medium compound, the four after them on the hard. So we, we expect to see a little bit of a gap open up between those two. But Jonathan Wong right now doing a fantastic job of staying with Patrick Blajan on the softer compound of tyre in front. Here is an onboard there from Rubla. You can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, the inputs our drivers are putting in to try and get these Group B cars around this circuit. Now, what to be a heavier than brakes coming up into this hairpin. Let's see if he gains on front in front. There is a big hit of the brakes. A very easy pull back off, very soft to the power, trying to get it sideways, and a nice exit there from Rubelar, but a better exit from Fraga in front, and Maricolino, Salvatore Mar uh, Margarita, has been given a penalty. I think that's being a little bit too rough, Tom. Yeah, that was for the opening lap incident we saw between himself and Patrick Blajan. Here is a replay then of what uh, in 
ensued down towards that first corner. Maraglino very late yeah. on the brakes, biffs into the side of him, allows Rublar to get up into third position, and then Rublar, of course, attacking against Jonathan Wall into second position. Look at that move, look at the confidence he has behind the wheel of that full focus Group B machine. Into second already after the first few corners, and look at how close he is now to the Brazilian Eagle Fraga here as well. Jonathan Wong there in fourth position, doesn't seem to have the pace as things stand uh, to battle against Blajan, who is close in front, but we ride on board now between Fraga and between Nicolas Rubelar, and look at Fraga there, he's struggling in this midsection of the lap. Rubelar is much more comfortable behind the wheel of this machine, and you can see that with just how uh, visible that difference is between those two drivers. An apex there somewhere, uh, Igor taking a very late apex, now coming up to the last part of the circuit, I think that whilst Nico is looking very quick right now, there's a distinct possibility that he's burning those medium tyres, he's really throwing at uh, that Ford Focus WRC around, sorry, Ford Fiesta WRC in the background. Um, very interesting to see uh, the range of Group B cars. Bear in mind, Patrick Blash has in a Nissan GTR Group B car, and Maravino, who had the penalty earlier on, the NSX Group B car. That's what I like about GT Sport, is that you can just go, right, that car's now a Group B car. <laughs> Speaking of penalties as well, Rio Tokyo one also given a penalty. One second uh, for him for colliding with another car. Didn't quite see exactly what happened on screen. Adam Wilk, the first driver to pit in this race. Then he goes from the hard to the medium compound of tyres and also takes a bit of fuel on board in his machine. Hasn't really featured so far in this race, so drops to the back of the field, but it'll be interesting to see how strategy plays out in this one. My guess is he just doesn't want to be in this traffic, there's a lot of uh, argy party going on a bit further down the field, and especially when you're close together, he uh, uh, will of course in that glorious Adam, uh, Adam, that's not a car, Audi, yeah, <laughs> S1 E2 Quattro, one of my favourite Group B cars ever to exist, and probably the boxiest car on the grid right now, and importantly he has some clean air to try and make the use of those medium compound tyres. You can see on the mini-map there, in the top right-hand corner of the screen, the spread of the field, that is Wilk there, the last arrow at the back, and of course the red arrow being the car watching now, Igor Fraga. Now one lap on these tyres, 15 laps of wear uh, on the tyres, in the world, so that they wear very quickly, is uh, what we're trying to say here. And I think Fraga now is experiencing the effects of that. He's just not quite able to get that car turned in the way it was on the first few laps. No, certainly not. Fraga really beginning to uh, struggle as well. Rubel isn't able to mount a challenge too much at the moment. These two have struck away from the rest of the field. Patrick Blagen there in third place. Also doesn't sub have an answer. And Rand Arush into the pits as well. He goes to the meeting the hard couple of tyres. Anthony Feeling also following suit as well. So those drivers will be on the quicker compound of tyre towards the end of this race here, Jimmy. That's going to be uh, important, isn't it, to uh, have that quicker compound. Uh, here is an incident as well. This is that thing between Rio to Kokiban, and this is why he's been given a one-second penalty against Rand Arush. Maraglino there on the inside. Donald on the left, Fab 
Caspian on the right. And then we have the Spaniards and, well... I wonder who that's for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas on the left and Alberto there on the right-hand side of your screen, breaks in the play. Then we have uh, Duarte and Gonzalo. The Italian commentators Emilio and Andrea giving us a big wave on the camera. And then we have uh, Yamada-san and Nakajima-san in the Japanese commentary booth as they uh, talking about uh, the drivers on circuit at the moment. And Rio Tokuba, represented Japan, of course, not able to uh, mount so much of a challenge in the mid-stages, being stuck in traffic. Meanwhile, somebody else who is mounting a challenge is the man we're running on board with, Nicolas Rubelar, who's really close up at the back of these guys. They're waiting a very long time to go and pit off of these medium compound tyres, aren't they here, Jimmy? Well, I think they're still going to pace them at the moment, so they're just keeping them alive. It seems that uh, Fraga struggles a little bit in the tighter corners in that Subaru, whereas uh, Rubelar and the Ford seems to just be able to get the cover and take it a bit easier for Kevin and Bado now. This battle is still going on. Uh, Benjamin Bado looks to the outside now, getting a little bit desperate against uh, Kevlum, the Dutch driver. Not quite close enough. Tries to go around the outside. Kevlum there understeers big time on the apex and actually has uh, Bado has no choice but to slow down and go, oh, sorry, I don't, I don't want to hit you, mate. So looks like the Dutch driver really struggling now with his medium compound of tyres. Won't be too long, I think, to we see him put in 220 k That's 140 mile an hour, 150 mile an hour now, coming down to T1, heavy on the brakes. You see how long the braking zones are in these cars, and even still, that Mustang in front really struggling for the traction and using a little bit of the grass there and accent. That usually these cars would like that, but not on these sport compound tyres. As you said, Jimmy, it's very difficult to be precise in these cars as well, isn't it? That's, of course, uh, well, due to a number of different factors. This group of machines are not designed to be raced on road courses uh, such as this. You can see we'll have an interview with the winner coming up a little bit later on here this afternoon as well with Igor Fraga. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what his thoughts are. As Maybe. With, 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 potentially with Igor Fraga. <laughs> should, um, jump in the Got a little bit there, are am I not? Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there as uh, Nicholas Rubelar's got good pace. Here, though, is a man who's also got good pace with Benjamin Barner. Here is Rick Cavalan there in full position. Here is Igor Fraga at the bottom left hand corner of your screen, just keeping the pressure behind at bay as well from Nicholas Rubelar. But Barner's looking very aggressive indeed against Kevlum. You can see consistently how much quicker he has been. He goes for the outside line as Kevlum defends down into that tight right hander. Can you tuck under here, I wonder? Not quite oh, close, no. no. Kevlum parking the car exactly where he needed to. Definitely. No, no, sorry to talk over you, sir. Tom, I thought he was going to just eat each other the inside. Kevlar, <laughs> Kevlar comes into the pit lane, so I think he's gone right. You know what? I've held him up enough. The tyres are not there. He's going to try and get out, and uh, I guess before the overcut, as we call it, or just pitting earlier, as we used to call it before that uh, came, into, uh, came into existence. He's now come out, but importantly, he's out in traffic. And look at the oh, traffic no. around here now. He's on the hard compound of tyre, and he's in the 11th. He's in the drop zone. Yeah, here's Maraclino as well, making a move on Jonathan Walsh. And that was an absolute disaster there in no uncertain circumstances for Rick Kevlar. That's not going to help his charge at all. Be more one on the inside of Kokibun through the right-hander. The Hong Kong driver from China makes his way through into the right-hander. Nicely done there from him. But now Maraclino versus Patrick Blagen through into the right we go. Blagen defending. He knows he hasn't got the pace in these mid-stages. And that's interesting, of course, because he's on the harder compound of tyres here. So he's about 0.7 of a second a lap slower. And it just seems to be really past its best shelf life. I think so now. I'm just looking at the head of the field and I'm thinking, what does Rubelar have to do to get past Fraga? The, the, the speed differential isn't quite there to get the move made at this point. Oh, here we go. So that answers my question. Both of them come flying in the pit lane and Rubelar was quicker into the pit lane. He had a better entry there. I think Fraga maybe did what Mixes out did back in Paris and hit the pit wall. Another penalty for Maraglino. That's someone who is uh, intentional and uh, trying to... Oh, they down the head. Rubelar's ahead. No, he's not. He's not. Sorry, no, you're right. No, I'm jumping the gun completely. Sorry. But Bader is, who has not pitted. Here comes uh, Darush in the background as well. This could be terrible for Rubelar. No, no, OK. So they stay second and third, but now they've got Benjamin Bader in front and these are on the fresher tyres, both Rubelar and Fraga. And also Darush in the background on a faster tyre. He's come from nowhere. He's now a real competitor in this race. That's brilliant there from Ray and Darush. He has pitted, of course. Benjamin Bader in the lead of this race has not pitted yet. So these guys are effectively battling for the race lead when Benjamin Bader comes in. They will be squabbling for who is going to be the victor in this race. And Fraga at the moment is defending very nicely indeed. You can see him there taking the title line through that right-hander. Rubilar and Darush. This is a three-way scrap. And if this is going to set us up nicely for the next seven laps, you can hold on to your hats because it's going to be an absolute thriller for the victory in semi-final B. Well, Ray and 
Roosh just came from absolutely nowhere. I did, I did not see him in the, in the time. She just had a fantastic uh, outlap or out stint there on that medium compound of tyres. His tyres are going to be older than the guys in front of him, but he's still got the pace of line. So look at them now. Jarush is right on the back of Fraga, who is uh, just about keeping Rublar behind as well. And in front of them is a, well, in front of them was Benjamin Badders. So there you go. Fraga back up into the lead. Rublar second. Jarush in third. The top three drivers are all nose to tail coming down into the first corner. Rublar looks to the outside, but not quite close up to Roosh, then goes to the inside of, uh, of Rublar. Side by side, a little bit of contact between the two drivers, and that slows down to Roosh with the top three drivers covered by three tenths of a second. This is absolutely mega. Look at Fraga defending. Look at Roosh attacking as well. In the inside, nearly there for the Frenchman. He goes up the inside. Rublar's a little bit wide. He's got the inside line for the next left-hander that follows, though. Side by side, they come. Door handle to door handle. Can de Roosh hold the outside line? Get the inside He's line for the right hand. managing to pull away just a little bit here as Rubelar and Daru still go head to head for position and Rubelar somehow in the drama of all of that manages to hold on to second. This is brilliant for Fraga he needs these two to squabble for as long as possible because at the moment Daru is the fastest of these top three drivers but if they keep fighting as they are Patrick Blashan in the background is going to come into play and Ryoto Kokiman so this race is far from over coming on to lap 12 only five laps remaining now here at but it's in these Group B cars, and you see Darush a little bit further back than he was last lap, just using the toe down the straight in the background. You see how much closer everyone is now after the pit stops, and Fraga really has his work cut out as Rubelai is big in his mirrors. Here is Flash Out and Kokuba for fourth, fifth, and Jonathan Wong there in sixth. They're basically just at the moment vying for the, the right to try and chase down to Roosh in front of him. But the thing is, Blashan on the hard compound of tyres is going to be struggling for, base, uh, for place. Sorry. And Kokiburn and Jonathan Wong behind on the medium compound of tyre. They're going to have that advantage. Kokiburn now looks to the inside. So they'll have the outside though for the hairpin. Blashan will park the car on the apex. So no thank you, son. This is my corner. As he does there rather forcefully and just about keeps fourth place for now. This is a great masterclass in defence from Patrick Blashan at the moment, managing to just park his car exactly where Kokibun and Wong don't want him to. A look at Wong now, it's attacking against Kokibun. Side by side, they do come. Wong with the inside line, but going into the next right-hander, it's going to be, of course, Kokibun, who then has the de facto track position coming down into that right-hander. In there they go, Kokibun with the inside line, Wong on the outside, still side by side they come, and Kokibun does manage to retain fifth position. It's a good exit there for Rubla up ahead as well. The time coming down in the sim street, coming down the main straight. There it is, first, second and third, back together once more. Fraga goes defensive nice and early. Rublar tries to go around the outside, but thinks, no, you know what, I'm going to just try and take my standard racing line. Thing is, when you go defensive, you make the corner narrower. It is a slower corner for you in front, so doing that too early can really go against you. This battle for fourth, still going strong. Kokibun there in the Peugeot RCZ Group B rally car, looking to the outside of Blashan in the GTR. Blashan holds the line on the inside, but he's sideways on exit there. He's really trying to push these hard compound the tyre. You can see just how much he's struggling for grip again, Kokiburn on the inside here, but will be for the outside for the hairpin, flash out again, goes, nope, this is my corner, parks on the apex, here comes Maraglino as well, being pushed by Jonathan Wong, this battle, this is for the last automatic place in the grand final, so flash out trying to hold on to that full position with everything he's got. Absolutely fantastic, five cars battling for that last spot, as Jimmy says, in the grand final for the world tour here in New York, so Blajan again defends, Kokiman opts for that outside line, and here comes Wong as well, Americlino sends it down the inside, three wide through the right-hander, into the left we go, Wong's profited, he's up into fifth place, brilliant driving, Kokiman down to seventh, and Americlino there in fifth, uh, fifth sixth position, and look at Felix coming into play now as well, as they go side by side down the start, finish straight for position, Felix on the inside, Americlino is defending as well, and you can see there, Kokiman does hold off the charge of Felix, for a couple of moments. Where has that Felix come from? He's again on the medium compound of tyres, so all these guys that are behind Patrick Pajan have the tyre advantage. I'll be surprised if Merrick Lina probably doesn't get another slap on the rest of the show as he's been really sending it in. There is the American driver there in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, on board with him right now, trying to look for a gap to get by him. Kokibun in the Peugeot, coming to the head, and you want to try and dive to the right of the last second here. If you're close enough to make the move, he isn't. And you can see how slow Blanchard is. He's just holding this whole train up, but no one can get by him. He's a master 
comfortably defending this position on the hard compound of Tarsalus GTR, but can he go to the end? I'm not sure he can. Jonathan Wong behind him, one of the quicker drivers here today in New York in that Mitsubishi. Will he look to the inside here coming up to the hairpin? He's got the run, I'm not sure he will. Blanchard goes defensive nice and only Wong goes to the outside, tries to. He's going to run out of room out there, and again, here comes the Maraglino and Kokiburn, who was forced out wide last lap sideways by Wong. This is fantastic, this is exactly what he wanted from this racing. Absolutely amazing driving from all involved. All the while it's allowed the top three of Frog and Rubelar and Darouche to just pull out enough of an advantage to have uh, no threat from behind. So that three-way scrap still continues for the racing. Wong goes defensive. Koki Banos on the outside line down in towards that first corner. He's going to try and get the switch back. He biffs into the back of Wong there at turn one as well. That's not going to help both of their charge. And look at Felix here in the background of your shots, trying to challenge against Maraglino. Nearly side by side they come, but Felix isn't able to find a way past down into that tight right hander. Just shuffling the field right now, and again, here we are. Patrick Bajan slow from the first sector. Wong and Cookie Burn trying and to find a way to Rouge. goes up the inside of Rubler. That's for second position. He's made it stick. I think that was very rude, but Ryan Ryan De Rouge there in the GTHC. It's good up to second temporarily. Rubler now on the inside. My word, Tom, these guys are going at it. Brilliant racing indeed. And you can see whilst they're battling, it's just allowing a bit of daylight for Igor Frager there in the race lead. 1.1 seconds. That gap's now up to his walk. He's on the grass against Kokiman. Absolutely brilliant. And Blanchard, though, has dropped down to sixth place. Side by side we go between Wong and Kokiman. Down into the right hander we are. Kokiman on the outside, Wong on the inside. Bit of barging, bit of bumping there. Wong being very aggressive. Into the left we are. Still side by side they come. Blanchard is trying to defend from Mariglino as well. Down the start finish straight we are to start the penultimate lap here. Wong on the inside, Kokiman on the outside. Here comes Blanchard as well as they take the tightest possible line down to turn one. Blanchard tries to attack. He's going to try and get two in one, but that's way too much. Oh, they're way off, they're way, way off there. Blanchard and Wong go off at turn one. And now it is Maraglino who is into fourth place here on the penultimate lap. And Phoenix there up to sixth position. Now he has a real chance of going through if he can just get his car in the right place at the right time. Maraglino goes wide. He's off. He's off. Kokiman now up into fourth position. And Phoenix up to fifth. This is the battle for the last place in the grand final. Right now, Kokiman will go through if the race ended as it was. But no. And Phoenix right on the back of the Peugeot driver at the moment. And now we come in to the last part of the penultimate lap. Always on the line there. There is the American driver all over the back of the Peugeot. A little bit wide down bottom going for the late apex, I think. Can he stay with Ryoto Kokiman? Last year, Kokiman won the Asia Oceania Regional Final. So he's now uh, dicing with a world finalist here. And I think, well, I'm not sure, but Kokiman seems to be putting away somewhat. Can he? Oh, well, I don't know. Through here is quick as well. This is going to go down the line, Tom. It really is. And the battle for the race lead is not over. I for second place is not over between Rubelar and Darus as well. Just two tenths of a second separating those guys on the final lap here at the Autopolis circuit as well. Down towards the first corner we go for the final time. Here is Ryota Kokiman as we ride on board with him. He's just got a bit of enough of daylight there to allow Anthony Felix to not attack, but somebody who is attacking is Mariglino on Patrick Blajan there in the background for track position as well. Not able to find a way through. Here is Rubelar though into the right-hander, defending once again from Darouche. There is Fraga into the left-hander, leading the race a bit more of an advantage is what he's got. Into the left-hander we go, Darouche very aggressive there on the kerb, up the inside. He tried, up the outside rather I should say, he tries. He's not able to find a way through. He's got the switch back here as they come into the left hand, the right hander, and then they're going to switch it left now. Rubelar with the inside line, defending as beautifully as he can. He's parking the car exactly where the Frenchman doesn't need him to here, Jimmy. Here it is then, last part of the lap coming up the hill. And it's Rublar that has second. I'm not sure if Jerusalem's going to have enough time to get this move done. Here he is, Darth inside Rublar on the inside. I think that's going to be it, Tom. No, is it? Oh, he's late on the brakes. Jerusalem surely is going to have an opportunity to find his way through, but no, not quite. Rublar parks it on the apex. Brilliant. It's going to be a run to the line. Igor Fraga wins semi final B here in New York. Rublar finishes in second. And does he, though, because Jerusalem carries him to the line, but he does take second. Jerusalem in third. Felix in fifth. He finishes just behind Rio to Kokiman. So the top four is Fraga, Rubelar, and Darush and Kokiman, Felix, Blajan, Mariglino, Wong, Barna, Wilk, and Kevalum. Uh, Wilk, sorry, rather, will make it through. Kevalum, and then uh, you can see Benjamin Barna will not make it through, and they will have to go in. Uh, they will be going no further here this afternoon, but there it's Nicholas Rubelar. What an absolutely fantastic performance.